to jump as orange grows. Microchips from sauce, iPhone cameras bust, taco salad plus, both on all my bones us. Olive Garden us, white foster us, Sabra Hamas, as far as us. Welcome to Bad Hasbara, the world's most moral podcast. My name is Matt Lieb, and I am your host for this podcast and this evening and forever. Uh, thank you so much for uh, listening to this podcast uh, right off the bat. I just want to say um, all y'all uh, who are new to this and uh, have like emailed and like talked to me online. I, I appreciate it. You guys are you're doing a lot of uh, the work for me. You're sending me interesting pieces of Hasbara. You're sending me uh, great emails. Um, no one has yet sent me. Uh, any um, hot, salacious photos of themselves. Good. I'm married, and I don't want that. No one wants that. But thank you. Uh, give us five stars in a review on the Apple Podcast uh, Store app. Uh, and then give us uh, four, or no, five stars. Not four. Fuck off. Five stars on uh, Spotify. It helps people find it. And, of course, if you're listening to this slash watching this on YouTube, Subscribe and do all that shit. Um, but, you know, uh, also listen to the podcast because that's the only way this thing makes money. Help me. Uh, anyways, today, oh, we have a great show. Our guest today, for the first time, I think, ever in the, well, certainly in the history of this podcast, but for the, like the first time, I think, in any of the podcasts that I've done, uh, my guest is here with me. He's right next to me, which, uh, which is nice because, you know, usually I'm just talking into a screen yeah, and that's not fun because I feel like I'm not getting like the full, like the vibe, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Look, I mean, it's one thing to try and intimidate someone yeah. in, into silence and, and, and obsequious, mm -hmm. uh, just agreement with everything I say right. over Zoom. Right, right. But actually in person with the eyes. I know, I'm and scared. The, and the, like... I actually can feel your fear. Yeah, I, I'm you know? literally, I'm, I'm like shrinking as you speak. Right, well that, I mean, that speaks to my training in, in Hasbara, really. Oh, okay, so yeah. you are a trained Hasbarist. All right, it's Daniel Mate is here. <laughs> He's a friend of the pod, friend of mine, uh, a, a newly acquired friend. Yeah. We started uh, corresponding uh, after the seventh, yes. when we were both uh, just putting out videos uh, you know, on the internet, just, uh, you know, screaming into the void. Yeah. And uh, we just started talking and uh, one thing led to another and we're in love. Uh, <laughs> and uh, no, one thing led to another and we uh, did Hanukkah together. Which yeah. Was very nice. Yeah. Here in LA, we did it. We, yeah. You came to a Hanukkah event that I co-organized and hosted at, at my friend's place. And it was, uh, it was amazing to meet you. I'm such an, yeah. uh, I mean, your comedy is so good that I think I've told you this. The, my, I encountered your comedy, uh, one of your videos, and of course your 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 shtick, your whole bit, mm -hmm. is playing sort of a liberal Zionist, a, a, a well intentioned, <laughs> very sincere liberal Zionist uh -huh. who's trying to sound very reasonable to himself, and the minute he starts talking, the utter <laughs> horrificness of his worldview, <laughs> of his <laughs> rationality and his logic, yeah, yeah. The, the banality of his evil. I mean, yeah. really, yeah, he's yeah, a yeah. perfect Hannah Arendt yeah. uh, character, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, comes through i was so fooled by your excellent writing and deadpan delivery yes. that i like went and retweeted this thing i'm like listen to this liberal zionist <laughs> equivocating <laughs> apologetics this guy actually believes and then i looked at it again because maybe i was just looking at it i was i was in this mode where you're like in just the re on, on the hedonic tread to, to quote matt chrisman mm -hmm. uh the hedonic treadmill of, yes. of reactivity yeah you know just seeing the so i just saw the subtitles i hadn't even tuned in to hear your tone of voice right so yeah. i was just seeing the words and yeah. of course tone is everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i was like this fucker look at this guy this is the epitome of everything i hate <laughs> about liberals and and then i watched it again i was looking at the comments but like hey well done matt this was excellent yeah and, uh, and, and yeah. your wife you know reposts it and like I'm, i get that she's a comedian yeah. And I go back, I'm like, oh, fuck, I got got. Yeah. I totally got got by this guy. And yeah. Then I, and I was just yours forever after that. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. There's uh, it, it doesn't always go that direction uh, because um, I think that there's so much content uh, that's happened for the last three months of people saying almost verbatim the exact same things I'm saying uh, that 
you just can't keep up with it. So it's just like, quote, tweet, fuck you, quote, tweet, fuck yeah. you, quote, tweet, fuck you. And so uh, there's a few people out there when, <laughs> whenever I have a video or someone posts something of mine, uh, there's always someone who just saw a little clip like a month ago and said, no, 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 that guy's a Zionist. And I'm just like, no, nah, bro, you didn't finish watching the fucking <laughs> video, which I mean, just speaks to the level of like competency that recent Israeli Hasbara has been, um, you know, like operating at uh -huh. because if, if my joke <laughs> version my parody version of guys like that is trucking people it means that literally they are just saying the things they are saying are so disconnected from i think the sentiment of normal people that they don't see the irony in anything that they're saying well in times like this it really does try it just it, it, it pushes the uh, the boundaries of satire to the point of can satire even survive I know. A, a time when things are so on the nose and yeah. on the open and irony is so dead dead and outlawed because <laughs> the min, because uh, the iron, irony is the ability to to hold on to contradictory things at once right and and, right. and in times of fascist um, absolutist. Uh, thinking and the kind of sentimentality that comes along with that, especially yeah. in the Zionist context, yeah. having a dark edge to your humor, like to me, that's the the real threat to Jewishness. I know, it just, I agree. It, it's it's like pesticide <laughs> that's killing off the aphids and and and, and yes. the, the 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 biome yes. of, of of Jewish. The, uh you know not agriculture but culture right our, yeah our intellectual like agriculture actual culture yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like it, we are yes all of the good bacteria is dying yes and what's left is just this bare white bone of fucking fascism and you're just like no 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 this is you've ruined what makes being jewish beautiful right and you've turned it on its head into this like um this because it's not i've said before it's not gallows humor when the hangman makes a joke <laughs> like <laughs> like that's that's not gallows humor before we bring our next uh hangy up here folks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i was killing children <laughs> and i said oh uh, yeah palestinian babies die like this anyways it's like <clears throat> it's not it ruins what makes and it's not, I was going to say, it ruins what makes being Jewish, I think, beautiful and and, and special. Certainly and, what makes being Ashkenazi Jewish beautiful. Sure. And, and I feel like, and it's not to say that it's not like a fetish, fetishization of the victimhood. It's the, like, the, the fact that in that, like, cauldron molded a certain type of person with a certain worldview, a certain sense of humor, a certain... Uh, just like culture and sense of being. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, Israel has taken that from me, <laughs> you know, well, you in know. a way it feels like uh, you're, you're watching the appropriation of what seems to me to be a diasporic Jewish uh, culture and then trying to graft it onto something that, you know, and, and trying to claim it as this is the ultimate expression of being Jewish, being someone who loves Israel, being someone who, yeah. you know, uh, fights in the IDF, being someone who does the things that the Israeli government does. And I just like, it it makes me feel bad because I'm like, no, that's not, that's not. Yeah, it. well, they can't take it from you. They can't take it from us, but they but they can try and they need to because the fact is that the gifts of being a, a Jew in exile, and again, mm -hmm. I'm, I, the more I learn about the complexity of Jewish identity all over the world, I want to be careful that I'm not painting all Jews with the same, sure, the same sure. pale. Right, the right. Pa the same pale of settlement brush. Right, you know, <laughs> nice. Uh, which is to say that, yeah. you know, Mizrahi, or Sephardic Jewish culture is yeah, very different. Than, very different, but certainly yes. from the perspective of like the lineage that you and I come from. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, my my father's Hungarian. Uh, on the other side of the family, the lineage goes through Poland and Lithuania and mm, things okay. like that. Um, there's an outsider status, right, that grants us a perspective, yeah, 
where we can see through pieties, we can see through hypocrisies, we can see through the temporary, the, the, we can see through the false permanence of regimes and empires because we know that everything changes. We're here one generation, we'll be somewhere else the next. Yeah. You know, we don't get too attached to uh, objects or uh, identifications because we're identified with a tradition, right. a way of thinking, a way of seeing the world, and moral principles, mm -hmm. and traditional and traditions that are portable, right? That can yes. that we can take with us on our backs, like yes. the matzah and Passover, you right? Know? And right. What is that? That's storytelling. That's humor. Mm -hmm. That's poking fun at the powerful. Now, what mm -hmm. happens when we become the powerful? We have to kill off our ability to see. Um, complexity and it has and it becomes crude and it becomes sentimental yeah and it becomes earnest in the worst way yeah <laughs> you know like earnestness is good but this is like earnesty like it's yeah, yeah it's yeah, like yeah. like just a kind of sentiment a sappy sentimentality for the young people out there it's called cringe <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> it's what you say as cringe yes 100 <laughs> percent. Right. it is uh, how you say a cringe yeah, it is cringe. Um, <laughs> um yeah so I refuse to let them take that. You yeah. know, I, I uh, and, and that's part of what I resonated so much with when I saw your content. Mm -hmm. The word I hate. <laughs> yeah. No. Me too. Me too. A toilet that's overflowing has a lot of. Content. I know. I know. But, a, a but fucking box of milk has content. But, but your work, you know, <laughs> your work and your your output and 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 what you were moved. It's like this moment. We don't get to choose our moments, mm. and 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 this moment for many of us, and th th there are some bright spots in it which doesn't yeah. which is horrifying. doesn't make it any less horrifying right yeah yeah but one of them has been seeing all kinds of people rise to the moment in their way in the way that they are called to do and so when i yeah. saw your stuff i'm like here's a comedian using short form social media videos to in to really crystallize different points of hypocrisy so that people see something they can't unsee so that the next time they hear it they're not just going to have a queasy weird feeling of like oh I did I just get molested right like <laughs> yeah and you'll be like fuck yeah I just did get molested and yeah. that's the fucker who did it and yes. get away from, get get right. off of me yeah like, run. it's it's, yeah. Self it, it's a kind of inoculation that you're doing yeah and I'm trying to do that in my own way yeah you know I it's funny you mentioned that feeling but that is I think I, I have never heard it put that way before but that is exactly what it feels like when you're dealing with the the rationalization uh and especially the using of um like the language of social social justice Oof. in order to justify these atrocities it feels like getting molested <laughs> because you are questioning yourself uh you're 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 questioning your own like lived experience your own brain and you're going like is it possible that i'm just some fucking alien who, when I look at a crying child or I look at s someone holding, you know, uh, their dead family in their arms, that I like feeling for them. Like, is there something I don't know? Yeah. Like, isn't this? And 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 there's there's like a connection there where you feel this icky feeling, um, but you're just not um, given the. You just don't have the confidence to say anything, and you're afraid of the consequences of what you're gonna of, of what you're saying. Which is yeah, yeah that is. Yeah, so th there's, that's the first time I've heard it put that way before, <clears throat> but I think that resonates. Well, people have been throwing around the DARVO uh, acronym, which is mm -hmm. not something I was familiar with, but and I forget what the components of it, the, the five letters are, but they, they name different strategies and tactics um, and and ways of operating that narcissistic gaslighters use. Okay, so this to is like- deflect, accuse, I forget what what they all stand for. Oh, interesting. I I had not I had not heard that yet. So yeah. So so people have been pointing out that let's, let's that look at, that, at up. that at this point in the in the development of Hasbara. And do you know what the word Hasbara actually literally means? To explain. Yeah, it means explanation. Right. And yeah. I remember when I was in Zionist summer camp, and I was a Zionist summer camp program leader back oh, in the day. Yeah. 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 Um, when we were living in Israel for. 10 months and this is a progressive left-wing one right but we they I, unironically gave us a two-day hasbara workshop about basically how to explain israel to the world because right. the world fundamentally constitutionally is born to misunderstand israel right so right. we have to explain it yeah we got really explain. just all about explaining yeah yeah daniel you got some explaining to do that's exactly yeah, yeah. explain yeah um 
so uh, I forget where I was going there with that, but but no, yeah. So the narcissistic guess at the, at the, it used to be that it was just about spreading false narratives that you could just you know we made the desert bloom. Right, right, it right. It was right. a land without a people. Yeah, no land, blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah. The Arabs rejected every piece of, you know. Right, right, right. We thought those things were true, so we were just trying to explain. So it wasn't yeah. it wasn't so subconsciously cynical. Right, right, right. It was just wrongheaded. Right, yeah. It was but factually it, incorrect, uh, but it was also just uh, what you what you had, and it, yeah, it, it kind it, of put a bow on everything. That's right. We were, t we, they were, you know, it's like, the whole postmodern obsession with narratives. They have right. their narrative, we have our narrative. Uh, yes, it's, yes. We're in a marketplace of narratives. Yeah, well, everyone's got a different truth. That's right. We're yeah. coming to the shook with, is... our, with our, with our, with our, you know, let's haggle over our narrative. <laughs> yeah, you know? right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but at this point in, in, in the, in the, in the, the, the terminal, uh, what can I say? Just, just, just. The, death spiral. The death spiral of Hasbara. Yeah. It's at the point where all it has left is the most egregious, abusive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sociopathic and sometimes psychopathic mm -hmm. tactics and no wonder everyone's feeling like their soul is being diddled you know yeah, like, yeah. Like we're all we're all being fucking fondled yeah 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 sometimes with a smile yeah and then sometimes with a slap right yeah, yeah. I, I did a debate on instagram live with the active duty israeli soldier oh who uh his name is uh rudy rockman rudy rockman the yeah. uh the fucking He's a J book guy. I know him from uh, back in my my Jew book days. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He's uh, yeah. Go on. Well, he's he's real something. Yeah, he is something. And uh, someone, I think I blocked him, and I think he yelled at me to unblock him recently. <laughs> and it's all right. Go Bro Broody Blockman. Yeah, yeah, Broody Blockman. Um, Gotta block him. Yeah, you know, but it was an interesting experience <laughs> for me because. Someone connected us. I'd never heard of him. Someone said, I think the two of you, would be, you know, and this, I'm brand new on this scene. Like I haven't been active in, in, in this world for, for decades ever right. since I sort of got disillusioned with Zionism and moved on with my life. Right. And right. And then, you know, every time Israel quote unquote mows the lawn in Gaza, I'll post Norman Finkelstein on Facebook to all my friends who, right. don't, who don't want to hear about it. Right. But I didn't, I never had a platform anyway to talk about it. Right. So now I do. And someone's hooking me up with this, you know, and we did this debate and he was stationed live on a military base right outside of Gaza, wow. like in the south of Israel, with yeah. his military fatigues on, his machine gun in his lap. Yeah. From what I remember, or, or maybe that I've seen him in other interviews with it, but yeah. anyway. I love having a machine gun for an interview, just in case someone asks the wrong question. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. No, we won't be going there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, no comment. No, no, you may not ask me. <laughs> Low, <laughs> as I would say. <laughs> um, Shake it, Bavaka <laughs> Hey. Um, so, but just the experience of sitting there with him was stunning to me because here's this guy in this position where he's, he's actually going and doing these things. Right. But his tone was so friendly mm -hmm. and, you know, it was the cadences that I remember from friendly Zionist co-workers at Zionist Cumber, the ones I never trusted. Mm -hmm. Shalom, everybody, welcome. We are going to have a nice conversation now. And he called me his brother, and he's talking about how the Palestinians are our cousins. And the thing is that for the first half an hour or so, or even throughout it, I kept getting like charmed because mm -hmm. I want to believe that he's my brother. 100%. There's something appealing. He's very good looking. He's very attractive. Right. He's, there's a kind of, um, it's seductive. Yeah. And I'm not even talking about him personally. Yeah. Like, I don't know the guy. Right, right. But the position he's in and the propaganda role he's serving. Yeah. He also seems to, he also has these views that are sort of, n sort of radical for a Zionist. Like he says he believes in the Palestinian right of return. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he wants to see a future where it's everything's equal. Right. But like clearly there's just, <laughs> I just didn't have the patience or the, or the time or the ability to like chip away at where's the, because right. there's a huge contradiction in here because right. you're going and blowing up these fucking people's lives right. right now for their own good. Yeah, you are serving in what you know is ultimately going to be the uh, ethnic cleansing of Gaza. And if it's not the ethnic cleansing, it's the guaranteeing that these cousins of yours will not want to ever, 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 right. ever, ever, ever go near you except with a rock or a right. Molotov cocktail. Right. And understandably, and then you're going to have more reason to do what you're doing. So there's just something sinister and darkly dishonest about this, yeah. but it's coming in the package of Jewish togetherness. Right. And I felt that in my body. I wanted to believe it and I, I kind of relaxed and, and he he was sort of hosting it. It was a mistake. We should have had a moderator, but 
you know, he, he was able to set the table for it. So he asks me, so Daniel, I want to first ask you, and I'll tell you my answer, you tell me your answer, and we'll talk because we're just two Jews talking. Yeah, and he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. what is a Jew? And we, so then we spend the first 25 minutes talking philosophically about what a Jew is. And, mm -hmm. and then I woke up, I gave an answer I thought was good, I was interested in it, and then I like suddenly realized, Jesus Christ, he hypnotized me. Right. We've been talking for 25 minutes about what a Jew is. Right, yeah. While yeah. the dude who just walked behind him in the frame just came back from, you know, bombing a hospital. Yeah. Yeah. What? Why aren't we talking about that? Why aren't we talking about it? Because, because he's setting the terms of this conversation, right? And the terms of the conversation have to go to the philosophical and the brotherly and all this kind of shit, right? Right. You have to go there because that is. I mean, especially when it's um, like Jew on Jew, uh, like Hasbara recruiting. And actually, it just yeah. like it's, it's that's as close as we get to Jew on Jew violence. Yeah, it really is. It's just like kind of uh, uh, telling you that you are you're you are one. You're all the same. That's right. And you are you know um, of course we all have the same values, the same morality. We of course all we all are heartbroken about what's happening. Of course we are. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Who would want this? Yeah, I don't want to do God this. Forbi yeah. God forbid innocent people should die. <laughs> yeah, right. And you're just you you have no i mean there's it's very hard as a person who you know especially i think as an american um like at least in, in my uh case like as an american person who is essentially a white guy yeah you know um when you when you have someone you know, uh, or an entity like, you know, Israel and, um, you know, telling you that you belong, this is, this is Jew belong. <laughs> you are, you know, you, you're not just, um, you know, some, some white person, you're something more than that. And oh, in fact, yeah. like, if you really want to connect, you got to go to this place where you are from quote unquote, that's right. It's, it is incredibly appealing. It's why birthright was such, I think a Genius. monumental success Genius, because of the fact that, you know, you take kind of all these, like, you know, if we're being honest, like uh, mostly white American teens yep. um, who yes, are Jewish, but also, you know, uh, have white privilege. I mean, it's since, at least since the establishment of Taglit, they've what, you know, which I think was in the nineties, like these white kids have been white. Yeah, these Jewish kids have been white. At least the white ones have been. Um, and either way, they're assimilated into American culture. Exactly. But they don't. But they know that they're not quite at the core of it. Right. Yeah. There's there's something a little bit different. Yeah. You know, not not a hundred percent. It's like you you essentially are you you know you grow up being like there are white people like me. There are Mexican people like this person. There are black people like this. So it's when someone says, no, this is like, it's not just like some uh, additive to your being. It's at the core of who you are, of who you are which is like, it, it, it's not to say it isn't, but it's to say, and that core, you know, you can only find a connection to it in this place. Well, but it's also playing on something that's unspoken, which is what they're, what they're really communicating is that core mm -hmm. is at the root of every feeling of loneliness you've mm -hmm. ever felt, mm -hmm. every feeling of alienation you've yes. ever felt, yes. every feeling of there being a yes. void at the center mm -hmm. of your, 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 where belonging should be. Yeah. Basically they're sticking a finger in the Trump and in, in the, the historically understandable and inevitable traumatic wound that we're all carrying, yes. where, where where lineage should be, where Yiddish culture should be, mm -hmm. for us Ashkenazim, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or Ashkenazim, as we'd say, yeah. uh, uh, and and saying that your your pain, your alienation, your confusion, which is also, of course, at that age hormonal yes 100 percent. Right? why it's called sexual zionism yeah you, you grab them at that age you, you, you i have not heard that term you, sexual zionism oh yeah 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 dude i know this <laughs> get a bunch of horny teens in a bus take them to a concentration camp yeah. get them really upset yes yes and get them really feeling close to each other and very yeah. vulnerable and then fly them across the mediterranean to to the land of milk honey bikinis yeah raves yeah, yeah. hot soldiers hot hot ass soldiers yeah you know yeah including the guy i was talking to He's yeah hot yeah um and and now you associate forever in their minds with, with uh you know that now that foreign country is the place of attainment liberation right ecstasy joy belonging right and all of that and then anyone who wants to take that away from you must 
you must hate, hate you. you deep down inside. Deep, deep yes. down. You know, I <clears throat> after I did that debate with him, which was two and a half motherfucking hours long. DJ, oh my God. I had to take a five hour bath and then rest for about, I, it took me three days to recover because not just talking to him, but doing it in front of tens of thousands of people. Oh yeah. And, yeah. and feeling this bird, like it's like, I'm in this terrible position. I'm like, I felt like, am I betraying Palestine by even talking to him? And of right, course I right, got right, a lot right. of really supportive message from Palestinians being like, it was really hard for me to listen to him, but what you did was you exposed him or you, yeah. you stood up for us and all that. So cool. I'm, I'm not sorry I did it, but it did take me a long time to recover in my body. Somatically, it really affected me because again, that push and that pull of wanting to trust him and wanting to be right. even belong to what he's trying to invite me to. But everything in my gut is telling me this is evil. It's pure evil. Yeah. I can't trust a thing I say. This is an illusion. Like in some, you know, fantasy, some, like Lord of the Rings, a temptation yeah. moment. That's what it felt like. Yeah. And then I was like, well, what is the actual pop culture metaphor I'm reaching for here? Are you a Star Trek The Next Generation fan? Uh, I know of it. So do you know Data? Yes, of course. Brent Spiner, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you know his twin brother, Lore? No, I don't. So, I'm not that far into the lore of lore. <laughs> exactly. But the, 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 the wordplay is, is actually on point here. Uh -huh. So Data is the android ab ab above uh, aboard the Starship Enterprise. Right. Um, for you kids, this is the 1990s reboot of the original Star Trek series, Star yep. Trek The Next Generation, mm -hmm. with Patrick Stewart as Jean-Luc Picard and all that. And Data is, he's programmed, he was created by a, a scientist, uh, who made him to be, you know, he's got a strong sense of ethics right. and morals and loyalty. He's very curious. He's mm -hmm. very, very quick, um, very humble, but very, very uh, powerful at whatever he puts his mind to. And he, but he's very obedient and very loyal yeah. to his employers, really, the Federation, you know, who are the good guys, right? Right. Um, just exploring the universe, not interfering. Yeah. He has no emotions. Right. He wants to be human. Mm -hmm. So he's very susceptible to the, th that's his one temptation. Anything that can make him feel something, he wants to feel it. Mm. He feels a deep alienation from spirit, from soul, because he has yeah. none. But he has the, he has like, he can feel the potential for it. Right. And he wants to learn. Yeah. So his humanity is always, is often a plot point throughout the show. Well, at a certain point, a few years in, we find out that his creator made a double, a twin brother named Lore. Oh, shit. And Lore looks like him, talks like him, same actor. But he has a circle beard and he's evil. He doesn't have a circle beard, okay. but he has a smirk. Oh. And he has a glint in his eye. And oh. he has a warm tone in his voice. Yeah. He has a very honeyed voice. And he says, brother. Mm. You know? <laughs> and there's a kind of, like, you and I are above them. Right. They don't understand us. They're yeah. not bad, but we need to dominate them. And he's always trying to fuck with, with Data's program and, like, get him to to join him yeah. and it's very tempting for him yeah. and i that's how i felt afterwards i was like yeah. i here i am with my ambivalence not that i'm not human i very much am but part of my humanity part of what makes data so human is his ambivalence he's not sure yeah he's pulled in different directions but lore is certain and yeah he's smooth yeah and he uses the language of brotherhood right to basically cloak a sort of supremacist fear-based yeah uh, worldview that he wants to recruit Lore into, and what I realized afterwards also is that their their very names are 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 poetic in this respect. Because when we talk about you know the competing narratives here of people who can see through mm. Zionism as a uh, destructive ideology versus people who are still clinging to it, well, they have the lore, right? And we have the data, right? Right, you know, hundred percent, and and. Yeah, so that was that's just, beautiful. Yeah. I love that, and I do uh, I love that. In this analogy, we're all <laughs> androids, <laughs> in a sense, trying uh, to trying to be as human as we can to be within our constraints. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I I think that is like a a, a great um, kind of encapsulation of this playing on identitarianism. Yes, and you know, you see that. With, I mean, you see that with a lot of things. I mean, you know, in the United States, obviously, we're very identity politics focused, at least, you know, in the kind of liberal spheres, democratic spheres. And I think that is kind of the kind of insidious, like, and pernicious thing about Zionism and liberal Zionism is that it, it, it uses that language. You it know, always which, has. Yeah. I mean, of course, it, it always has, but it's, uh, 
it's in a more pointedly um, faux social justice sense. Yes. Because of the idea that, like, you know, I, I mean, you know, it, I can't claim if I were born, um, you know, like in the forties or whatnot, uh, and I, you know, I came of age at around the time of not just, you know, born at Israel's creation, came of age around 67 war. Um, I can't claim that I wouldn't have be holding on to this feeling of righteousness that Israel, you know, is this country that yeah. is defending itself and, you know, it's doing what it needs to do and the pride that I would take in that. Like, I, I, I you know, I'm no, I'm not saying that any of us are any better than people who are like older and who like just hold on to this belief about Israel. Absolutely. Um, but uh, you using that same rationale now just is so disconnected yes. because of the fact that, you know, Israel is such a firmly right wing and openly racist country, yeah. um, you know, at a societal level and a governmental level. Yeah. Um, and again, not to say America is not a racist uh, country and at both a societal level and a uh, governmental level. But the the difference is, is that I think if you're trying to recruit an American liberal who uh, acknowledges that America is a racist country and they're against racism and they're trying to fight against it, um, and you're using it, you, then you are a predator. You are preying on their uh openness and the, you're 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 preying on their progressive attitudes yeah. and you're preying on the fact that uh you know people want to belong yeah well that, you're you're actually a very specific kind of predator you're a vampire yeah yeah because yeah. you need the lifeblood of their identification with you to keep your thing going because mm -hmm. your thing is not self-sustaining right you know, it doesn't actually belong to that land. I'm right. not saying Jews don't belong to that land. Jews have been there for, for a long, long, a long, 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 long time. time. But the yes. Jews who belonged there were actually marginalized and mm -hmm. used by the Jews who came there. Yes, 100%. You know, yeah. Totally used. <clears throat> so uh, the the predatory nature of... Zionism. <laughs> Zionism itself, yes. right? And it, and it, and it vampirizes, uh, yeah, Jewish ambivalence, mm -hmm. uh, Jewish uncertainty, yeah. Jewish loneliness. And pride and identity yeah. and culture and yeah. all of the things that are on its own, uh, you know, are what are beautiful about uh, being Jewish. And it takes that and it perverts it. And... Uh, and it uses uh, all that to prey on people. Like when I went to, you know, uh, Birthright, it was my only experience actually in Israel. Um, uh, my, all my other experiences with Israel have been just living on, in West LA my whole life, <laughs> uh, which is uh, very, especially, you know, right next to a very Israeli neighborhood, not just Jewish, but as an Israeli uh, yeah. neighborhood, there was, you know, uh, Pico Robertson area. Um, and, uh, but when I went there, it, it was very effective because they were, you know, singing camp songs. I was like, damn, this whole country sings camp songs. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Like it, it, it played on that, you know, that cultural connection that yeah, the whole country is a youth group, right? That's what it, it was. That's, I was like, <laughs> it, can you make a country out of a youth group? Can, it's like, <laughs> it's wild. Yeah. And it's, it's a, it's effective in that way. Um, and it's also once you kind of like see it for what it is, it's uh, incredibly offensive because you're just like, this is you preyed on the fact that, you know, as a people, um, uh, I'm, I'm not painting every Jew this way, but generally a little bit, a little bit paranoid. Like, uh, you know, there's always a little bit of why is this person doing this to me? Or why is this someone taking advantage of me? Why does someone just hate me for no reason? Or what's gonna happen if things go south? Yeah, what's gonna happen if, if shit really pops off? I, I I grew up watching Saved by the Bell. And I remember being like, why do they not like Screech? What is it about Screech? Like, I get that he's kind of goofy, but he's just trying to make them laugh. 
what's wrong with that? Yeah. And this fucking Aryan Zach Morris comes out yeah. and just like shits on them in front of all their friends. Yeah. And I just I remember feeling a strong connection to Screech. Um, not just because I kind of look like him, but because I kind of act like him. Like there was a bit of me that was, you know, I this uh, a loud, goofy idiot. Yeah. And, um, and I'm, you know, when I watch facts, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little older than mm -hmm. you. I grew up watching facts of life. Yeah. And Mindy Cohen, mm -hmm. uh, who played, uh, Natalie Green on, on facts of life was like the only out Jewish teenager in the, like the pop culture space. And yeah. I, I, and I remember she was on the cover of like, uh, you know, I don't know. The Nebish magazine or something, yeah. whatever magazine they told to us teenage. Yeah. But I was like, I, 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 I was, I was kind of in love with her. I also felt kind of sad for her because she was kind of like the, the, the ugly duckling. But then she got beautiful later. But yeah, no, like we didn't have a lot of, yeah, role models, and they were they were kind of they were outcasts. Right, and and the you kind of you know you, I'm not saying that like, the representation of at least specifically Screech was you know, openly anti-Semitic, but I remember as a kid just feeling a little bit like um, he was, I don't know, feeling like there was something there and then I'll, I, me always having a little bit of this feeling of like, is this a thing? So there's like a, a general like fear and a paranoia and a prey on that, yeah. I feel like is what a lot of uh, Zionist recruiting relies on. Um, and uh, it's for me, once you kind of like, you know, wake up to that, fact you just kind of it's you you end up wanting to fight it with every fiber of your being mm -hmm. and it's so funny because right now you know we're at a time where you see people um you know i would say bad faith actors some of them i would say some people just earnest and ignorant being like i can't believe how much anti-semitism i'm seeing you know and they're talking about like seeing a protest a ceasefire protest yep. or they're talking about like a, a college student who uh you know wrote an essay or or like you know like uh, they're they're talking about stuff that the word intifada yeah yeah just seeing the word intifada and uh you know like they're parsing the meaning of like you know uh, if someone is a martyr or dies as a shaheed, like, is it, uh, you know, that, that means they killed Jews and all, all, right. all this kind of like, you know, thinking. And I understand that, um, you know, at least from the good faith people, I understand that feeling of like being yeah. like, I can't, I cannot shut up Absolutely. when I see anti-Semitism. But for me, I like look at all that stuff and I just look at the programming that's done, you know, through years and years. And I go like, I agree we need to fight anti-Semitism with every fiber of our being. And I think the greatest exporter of anti-Semitism in the world is Israel. Not just and not just exporter, but importer. Importer as and, well. And fabricator. And I don't just mean fabricator in the sense of making it up. I mean it's 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 gross domestic product. Mm -hmm. It's it's what it consumes. And in fact, you go all the way back. Mm -hmm. Sorry, were you done? Can I? Oh uh, yeah, I was. I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just gonna pull you forward a little bit. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk, yeah. talk to me, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, a little podcast technique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, pull my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Get in the frame. Yeah. Um, if you go look at the writings of the early Zionists, mm -hmm. you want to talk about, you know, it's like this has become such a cliche mm -hmm. since October 7th, but every accusation is a confession. I know. It's... And, it, and when it comes to, 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 to Zionism, it's just true. When it comes to Hasbara, so they call us self-haters or self-loathers. Right. Okay. You want to, you go back and look at the early writings of the first Zionists. Yeah. You want to see some self-hatred, mm -hmm. some rejection of what being Jewish has meant 100%. in exile, in yeah. quote unquote exile. Um, being a wandering Jew, being a ghetto Jew, being a Talmud Jew, being mm -hmm. an artist or intellectual or labor leader Jew, they rejected all of that. They saw it as weak and sniveling. Yeah. They wanted to be the Aryans. They yeah. wanted to, to build, you know, you look at Jabotinsky. You yeah. Know, he talked about the cowering, sniveling Jew, the victim Jew. No, we're going to create a proud, strong desert Jew. Right. You know, right. With a, with a, you know, with a, a nice square chin. <laughs> a nice square chin and a garden rake. And or a, 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 an Uzi in his hands, right. rather than like a Sefer Torah or a right. you know, um, deep deep <clears throat> rejection of vulnerability mm -hmm. and ambivalence, yeah, and intellect and 
moral thoughtfulness. Right. Understandable from a trauma response perspective. Sure. Right? I never want to feel that way again. Yeah. Where did it get us being so nice? Where did it get us being so moral? It got us in the ovens and the gas chambers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, I can feel that. And I think that sometimes the the risk for people like me, maybe you feel this as well, mm -hmm. is I'm so disgusted with the uses to which the exploitation of anti-Semitism is being put. And you know, Norman Finkelstein is the is the prime exposer of this ever since his book, The Holocaust Industry, 20 yeah. years ago. And people yeah. hated him for writing that book. But it's true, there is an industry, you know, there's no business like Shoah business. And, <laughs> and, and, and they exploit it, you yeah. know? Yeah, and yeah. they exploit it to the hilt not because of some sinister Jewish conspiracy to control the world, no. but you know you could be forgiven to if, if it kind of looks that way sometimes. Yeah, but it no, it's actually to to insulate this country that's a, that's a strong ally to U.S. foreign policy interests. Yeah. from criticism. But my disgust at all of that exploitation sometimes leads me to want to vitriolically dismiss any of the feelings or even the facts that might suggest that Jews aren't safe sometimes, or that right. there is hatred right. towards Jews, or even that there's irrational hatred towards Jews that weaves its way sometimes into pro-Palestine activism. Course. I want to deny that, right. because it's not convenient to my narrative. Right. But if I'm actually honest about it, and I talk to Palestinians, they're like, no, no, we see it. Yeah, of course. And of course it would be. Yes. You know, yes. And we don't need to deny some right. part of the truth in order to salvage the part of the truth that we want, because as Norman says, like truth and justice are not at odds. We can right. actually, you know. So the fact is, these f feelings, the way this is the way trauma works. You carry a feeling in your body from something that happened, and then your mind makes up a story about that feeling and it projects it outward and it sees it everywhere now and it completely limits your response flexibility yeah. in the present. And that's what happens with the Zionist stance. The trauma is real, the fear is real, and there may even be some evidence that points to it's not entirely gone, the anti-Semitism. It's true, it's of not. Of course, yes. And, but the uses to which it's being put, the story it's being put towards proving is one in which we will never be safe right. and which anything we do is justified and in which there's something shameful actually about being um, a target. There's something shameful right. about being vulnerable and therefore we have nothing in common with vulnerable people and therefore yes. we want to align ourselves <clears throat> with the powerful. And yeah. that to me is the ultimate degradation of and desecration of um, Jewishness, so like you, I think that's the, 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 that's the prime threat to not just Jews physically, but to the Jewish soul. 100%. And, and I think that that's when I see um, these, the way that people will look at, like, for example, Norman Finkelstein's book about um, the Holocaust industry um, and just, and, and, and other critiques of Israel and just kind of like label them as anti-Semitic and whatnot. I, I like, I look at specifically, we're talking about, um, you know, his book in the way that, uh, the Holocaust, um, is, you know, used, um, in order to bolster the Zionist project. Um, I don't look at that critique, like to look at that critique and say, this is, you know, inherently anti-Semitic. It's saying like, it's like fooling the world. And that it was like, no, 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 no. It is preying on Jews. Yeah. Specifically. Like you have to understand that like the effect of something like the Simon Wiesenthal Center, or, you know, the, the um, Yad Vashem or, uh, you know, Museum of Tolerance, uh, the effect on Jews. Is that what the Museum of Tolerance is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I drive. I've driven by it on the freeway yeah. several times. Yeah, yeah I don't know what it is. I'm like, oh, that sounds tolerant, and nice. <laughs> I could probably tolerate. Oh that. boy. Well, <laughs> it, it, the thing is, is it's like you know, it's a it's a Holocaust museum essentially, okay. and uh, it is uh, the, anything anything with a name that milk toast. Yeah, I know. And just inoffensive has to be a fucking. I know, dark, dark place. I know, and it's like it's it's so um, <laughs> it's so dark because once you kind of like realize, once you see the way in which places like that are utilized, it's like for for example, this is a tangent, but uh, um, someone had posted uh, something like, you know, did you know uh, that um, the Palestinians built a village on you know a uh, um, uh, on the ruins of a, a Jewish community that existed in like 300 CE or something like that. 
and you know trying to be like so they're the ones destroying villages and it was like yeah and we're, first of all we're all building ruins on top of other people's civilizations that is that's i mean you know and secondly i was like oh okay that's very interesting also did you know that um the uh in israel they built uh they desecrated a Muslim cemetery in Jerusalem to build literally a museum of tolerance. Yeah. They literally did that. And not only that, but it was so egregious that there was multiple stop work orders from people in Israel who were just like, and judges want going like, no, no, this is fucked up. We can't fucking do this. And it, it w went forward, it opened 2019. Wow. And, and so like, you know, to, to call it the Museum of Tolerance and have it be on top of a fuck, it just... Well, actually, it's perfect. Think of what else the word tolerance means in, in a different context, in, yeah. in, in, in the, in the you know, addiction context. Yeah, 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 yeah. They've kind of grown a little bit of a tolerance. Your tolerance to, goes up to yeah. the point where you don't even feel it. And That's you need right. more. You need more and more racism. Yeah, and you need more and more belongingness. Yes. And you need yeah. more and more... Um, uh, blatant disrespect and uh islamophobia and uh, anti-arab racism yeah and and yeah. Mi and military aid and mm -hmm. destruction and fear and deterrence yeah and, and you know but yeah so like you know i i look at i look when i when you're talking about these places like the yad vashem or museum of tolerance or whatnot um holocaust museums the effect that they have on uh jews it is it's different it's different than than people going into uh j just gentiles going to museum it's because it's not it's like you can like a gentile can go in there and they, they might be affected by it but <clears throat> the absolute fear and horror and disgust and personal feeling of paranoia and the feeling like this could happen again uh is visceral mm -hmm. uh and so when you know when norman finkelstein is is critiquing the, the that industry i read it as a critique of a of a of a project that is meant to prey on the trauma of jewish people across the world it is that like israel preys upon us it makes us scared it yeah. makes us paranoid it makes us like feel like the idea that people actually say with a straight face in this country we need Israel to exist because one day, no matter what, we are going to be forced to move there. Oh, yeah, yeah, We're going to have yeah. to yeah. escape. That's it right. is like the, the, the people will say openly it is their contingency plan. Did you see what Joe Biden said at the Hanukkah party? Yeah. When he the said the president of yes, the United States yes, said not a single Jew is safe. Uh, if without Israel, without not a Israel. single Jew in the world would be safe. Basically, it, if not for this foreign country that I'm funding. Yes. I'd be like sending out the, you know, the SS tomorrow to round up our Jews, but I don't dare do it because of my buddy Israel. Right. And like that, to me, I look at that and I talked about this before, um, but it's, it's why I look at Zionism and liberal Zionism in America and kind of diasporic Zionism. Like people, they, they don't live there. They're not from there. But they're holding on to it because they know eventually that they'll have to move there. Cash in that chip. I look at that as defeatism. Mm. Because if you actually believe in any of the social justice uh, you know, uh, ideas that you proclaim to, um, the idea that you're like, well, no matter what, we're fucked. Nazis that's right. are going to take over. That's right. That's you giving up. That's you saying, oh, okay, you know, uh, at some point they're always going to win. Yeah. The Nazis are always going to win and we're going to have to move there. And in order for that to be possible, we're going to have to allow this mass atrocity, this genocide, and, this ex expulation, the, the uh, ethnic cleansing. Like that is defeatism. You have given up. And the idea that you would still hold on to any of these like um, yeah. principles while simultaneously justifying this thing, to me, I'm like, these two, the circle this does not square? Is that it? Uh, you can't square that circle. You can't yeah. square that yeah, circle. 100%. Um, 
But at the same time, you get to have it both ways. Because it's like, when that day comes, then we shall move back there, right? But in the meantime, we're going to live here, obviously. Because it's fucking better. <laughs> it's better. Of and course it's, it's better. We don't, I'm not Israeli. I don't speak Hebrew. I don't want to live, I don't want to serve in an army. I don't want kids to serve. So and also a lot of Jews seem to die there. That's exactly right. So we're going to stay here. We're yeah. going to pay for season's tickets right. to watch them play that sport. Yes. We're going to cheer them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They do that dirty work for us. And then some, but, but meanwhile, we're going to basically bankroll, underwrite, clap for, or ignore the cost that that incurs upon another population that we'd rather not talk about right. called the Palestinians, Yeah. right? And they just have to fucking suck it up for us, for my great grandchildren's eventual need to flee somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, Ahmed in Janine or Muhammad in 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 Khan Yunus, mm -hmm. whatever, has to lose his entire family. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to live here. Yeah. Here in in you know fucking Skokie, Illinois, right. or, <laughs> yeah. or or Patterson, New Jersey, or wherever. Yeah. Uh, or the Upper West Side. Like right. so, the expectation we're placing on them, and then we wonder why do people hate us so much now. People hate us so much for mm -hmm. irrational reasons. There are irrational foundations for anti-Jewishness. Sure. I'm not going to gaslight people into saying, no, you're making it all up or we're making them do it to us. But it's not fucking helping. No, it certainly isn't. It, uh, yes. And, and this is the other part of Finkelstein's thing. I mean, I think he would say, yes, you're right that Zionism preys on Jews. But his whole book, The Holocaust Industry, was about the shakedown of German banks. Oh, right. And no, the shakedown right. of European countries and the yes. uses of European guilt yeah. to, to create an iron wall mm -hmm. of diplomatic and military and economic support. Mm -hmm. for Israel right. in perpetuity. And that mm -hmm. is very sinister. And that yeah. starts to look like the stereotypes that we're so concerned about right. of a cabal of 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 of, of hook-nosed, mm -hmm. shady, scheming hebes yeah. behind, you know, who right. look like you and me right. behind and uh, that, behind the scenes pulling the strings of everything, which is what, you know, I made a video, uh, you know, one of my walk and talk videos, like mm -hmm. one of my first forays into like short form satire, like what you were doing. Mm -hmm. I was inspired by you. Yeah. And I was like, guys, you know, I'm, I'm really having a dilemma here because people are coming at me saying I'm an anti-Semite, I'm a self-hater, I'm actually promoting Jew hatred throughout the world. And obviously that's my purpose. Like, that's what I'm hoping to do. Oh, yeah. That's my intention. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. You know, I'm doing my but best. Like, like, here I am trying to cause a second Holocaust, but meanwhile, my DMs are full of Palestinians saying, thank you, brother, I love you. <laughs> thank you for restoring my faith in the Jewish people. Thank you for restoring my faith in humanity. People like you, you are my true brother. So I'm like, this isn't working. I'm thinking I need to change tactic. I think I need to like get Sasha Baron Cohen and Amy Schumer together and yes. go behind the scenes and fucking browbeat TikTok executives mm -hmm. and tell them, you know, I need to get... Harvard presidents fired yeah. for fucking like stumbling over some words right. in, in a hearing uh, some uh, over some bad faith questions. I'm just wondering maybe that way if we saw if people saw us acting like a cabal of shady fucking <laughs> golems yeah. or golems or whatever the fuck yeah, yeah. they might come for us already. Come on. Yeah, I, <laughs> like honestly guys at this point, I'm just going to buy a fucking octopus suit. <laughs> if I do it in an octopus suit, then will it happen? <laughs> That's what you want, right? <laughs> like, it, it, uh, yeah, like 100 percent, I agree with you, and that satire is like spot on because it's it is so uh, like this the, is good Christian baby blood, by the way. Yeah, no, oh, it's delicious. It's our, it's, farm to table. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, LA, man. neighbor to table. <laughs> 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 really really irony and rich mm, you know it's like Folgers but blood libel uh, irony yeah. Ah, yeah. Hey, look yeah. at that. Israel is irony anemic hey the irony dome <laughs> 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 yeah but uh like I look at I look at so many of the things uh that they that they do and so much of like the the media spin and like the PR you know, and you they, know, they meaning Israel and Zionists, not Jews as a whole. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah yes, of course. No, I had all Jews. No, uh, anti Semites, fuck off. Yes, uh, Nazis, please die. Um, but like, I look at the, you know, I mean, not to mention the incredibly disgusting, like strong arming, I think, of uh, that Norman Finkelstein talks about of, you know, the Germany and, and European states. Oh, in order they are so cucked. Yeah, super cocked. Oof. And uh and but I just from a media perspective, I look at it and I go like yeah, you can't 
on one hand, like talk about tropes <laughs> and with the other hand be like, I'm going to use the media to silence me. It's like, yeah, I, I am not, you are not helping. You are not helping like, like quash the tropes you're talking about. A hundred percent. You know, you're, you're wearing the octopus suit. Yeah. Don't wear the octopus suit. Stop troping it up, man. Yeah, you're doing tropes. It's it's like, it, yeah. th and it's why I like, you know, I feel like I'm going crazy whenever I see it because I'm just like, I fucking hate anti-Semitism. I hate the way that uh, Jews are. Come on, give it a chance. Uh, I mean, yeah, I got to try it. Uh, Have no, some tolerance, man. I'm trying to Have tolerate. To, there's a museum. <laughs> there's a museum about it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm like trying to... Uh, not like turn i'm trying to not go crazy i'm like yeah. watching actual anti-semitism i'm watching a campaign of anti-semitism coming yeah. from israel yeah um playing into tropes yeah. playing into jewish fear preying on jews yeah preying on anyone who um like isn't jewish and is speaking out and then saying they're doing it from as a representative of, of all Jews, and of course, and, and, praying, praying on real live Palestinians, and then so. of course in real life, praying on real life Palestinians, yeah. and and I look at it and I'm just like, this is as someone who hates anti-Semitism, this is fucking atrocious, and it is such a huge yeah. fucking like it, it just it does anti-Semitism. It, it is the greatest uh, like entity. Anti-Semitic entity in our time. And that is actually its true nature. It's not its stated purpose, but it's its covert purpose because it yeah. wants to confirm the story that says that this diseased ideology needs to continue to perpetuate itself. As long as there's a single anti-Semite on the planet, well, we'll keep producing them. Yeah. But then this this begs the question, you know, for people like you and me, because I'm sure you're like me. This has been three months, right? Mm -hmm. The irony got me through maybe some of the first month, the yeah. outrage and the the disgust. But at a certain point, it just starts, it, it's like, it becomes like, I need, I need something else because this is going to destroy podcast. me. A po <laughs> That's why you start a podcast, Daniel. That's the ticket <laughs> to quote, could quote famous Zionist John Lovett. John Lovett. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the ticket. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I've been trolling him a bit, but nice. he ignores me. Um, uh, but so, but what is the antidote? Because we're getting sucked into this vortex of mm -hmm. hatred, and it we can say it's not self hatred, but it's hatred of something to do with ourselves. Sure, it's sure. hatred of you know, and that itself is corrosive. Yes, and it's exhausting, and we can't keep it up forever. Yeah. And I'm starting to you know, um, I'm starting to th think about things like love, which is like yeah. it's like the actual antidote is a kind of uh, I mean, Cornell West is such an uh, such an inspiration at times. Like, this, yeah. the sort of what is the spirit of a blues people, a jazz people, a klezmer people, which is yeah. what we are. You yeah, know? yeah. What does resilience look like? It's got to do with love. It's got to do with joy. So, and 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 when I look at it from that perspective, instead of like shaking my fist at why are, look at what how these Jews are exploiting Jewishness, I'm like, no, they're not Jews to me. Yeah. No, I'm not. I know. I'm not even going to accept the debate on that. You're, you're, you're not being Jewish. Sorry, you're. I'm not the anti Semite. Yeah. You might be. But whatever you're doing, whoever you are, whatever you're doing in the name of, I gotta stand against it because I'm 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 actually I've got to protect. Like whatever is valuable about that, Judaism yeah. lives in me. Like yes. I, I don't have kids. I know you have a kid. I'd like to have kids. If I'm gonna pass Judaism onto my kids, I have to like preserve it, which means yeah. I have to be around people who keep it clean. Yeah. Right. I got to keep it kosher. I know. You know, and know. that's got nothing to do with bacon. It better have nothing to do with bacon because I'm not giving I that up. Fuck that. But, but the traif, you know, the, yeah. the, 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 the unkosherness is in the mixing of, 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 of tribal supremacy with, with a sense of security, mm -hmm. you know, the, 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 and we can go back to our earliest traditions and we don't have to be religious, but we can consult our, our actual scripture and our greatest intellectuals and our mm -hmm. thinkers and our, our scholars and see that there's so much embedded in Judaism. It's so funny. Rudy had this crazy concept of Jews as the immune system of the world. Oh, Lord. He's like, that's his idea with the chosen people. We chose to, to, you know, and there's something actually beautiful about that, except when you distort it even two degrees, it, it turns becomes in, Nazism. It's straight up Nazism. That's yeah, exactly right. Yeah. And I said to him, okay, where the, have you ever heard of autoimmune diseases? Yeah, right. Do you know when, about lupus? Yeah. <laughs> 
Jupus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the the body is fighting back. The body, you know, the immune system no longer knows what's the friend and what's the enemy. Right. But but in terms of, we have to have inoculation against against the virus, mm. and that's what 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 Zionism has become. It's Zionism is zombieism at this point. Yeah. And and in a zombie movie, you could see your best friend get bitten. Yeah. Right. The only and and you might have to club them to death with a with a baseball bat yeah, in that movie, right? Yeah. You might have to to bash their 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 brittle skull, right? Right, and say goodbye to them and cry, and then yeah, yeah. you know. But the difference is, we're living in the real world where we it, can't bash our brains. We can't bash our brains, but also it, it, it is curable, at least theoretically. I, I believe have, that too. People have choice, and we have agency in terms of how we show up. Yes. And, I, and I and in this new year, you know, I've been taking a little break from my, um, my. Uh, uh, you know, highly, deeply committed and tireless, indefatigable, read, compulsive, addictive social media use, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I get so much praise and thanks for and is very bad Isn't for it? me. It's just so uh, good. But DMs just of love. Oh, good God. Is it yeah. such a turn <laughs> Love <on>. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I am good. <laughs> Tell me I'm good. <laughs> No, but I mean, let's be real. That's a dopamine hit when someone likes your post. It's scientific. It is, and when people who are, when people who have been silenced and who are grieving and hurting and in pain say to you, "You give me hope," and I can't speak now, but you can. Yeah, you know, that's a turn on. It's exciting. However, if I start making it about me and playing that role and yes. not coming back to how did this thing start? At least for me, speaking up on October eighth. I got out my phone, I went outside, and I just started, I pressed live, and I started talking. I didn't, I'd never done an Instagram live before. Yeah. I had no reason to think anyone would tune in. Yeah. I knew I had some things I needed to say to hear myself say them to clear things up, because I knew things were about to go to fucking hell. Yes, yes. And I just started talking, and I was doing it from a place of not trying to get attention, not trying to prove anything, but just to put something into the world that could be... An antidote, or an or an or a probiotic, or an antioxidant, or right. something that would be healthy in a time that was going to be very malnourished and very polluted, right. very toxic. Now, here we are, three months later, and it's, my platform's kind of blown up, relatively speaking. A lot of incentive to keep going and doing the exact same thing. But if I keep doing the exact same thing, time is moving on, and my insides are changing, and everything is changing. I gotta keep. I gotta. I gotta remember to reconfigure. And so I've taken a break for the past week, and I'm coming back to it now yeah. in the new year. I want to reconfigure it from a place of like, how can I actually step outside of the entire toxic thing yeah. and only speak in a way that is clear and pure, and not let these bastards drag me into their insanity. Yes, you not, know? not and, and, and not and, let and them. So I can actually yeah. offer a hand out of the ditch that they're in if they want it. Right. If they want a hand out of the sarlacc pit of. of <laughs> You know, of Zionism, of Zionism. Yeah, I will. Of, of Israel advocacy. That's yeah. right. I will be Lander Kolrisian, and yeah, they can be Han Solo, it. and I'll pull them out. Yeah. If they don't, I can't save them. I know, and but it, I can't save them if I'm sliding into it too, and if I'm constantly like, "You fucking, you're you're ruining Judaism and all that." No, Judaism will survive you. Yes, yes, and it's in me, and it's in you, and it's in our jokes, and it's in our laughter, and it's in our joy, and all yes. that. You know, and that's that's my like that's my little that's my little sincerity moment for today. I, I love that, and I I completely feel that. Um, I you know I became I had a kind of a similar path. I mean, like the you know for the first month though for me, I wasn't creating content. Uh, I wasn't like making videos or whatnot. I was talking to liberal Zionists I knew and trying to understand like, not knowing they were liberal Zionists, to be honest. A, a, a lot of them, some I, I knew um, and I was like forced to conversation with them. And then some who I was just like, hey, um, shit's kind of crazy out there right now. And trying to like gauge how they're feeling and finding out that they were like, yeah, I know. Too bad we got to kill all those people. They were being like Rick the Hormone Monster and Big Mouth. Yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? <laughs> Let me show you how to make it. <laughs> That's my favorite. I mean, no, one. Nobody wants to kill us. If it's up to them, <laughs> <clears throat> but like just vibe, baby. <laughs> but I was like, you know, um, 
I, I, I spent, I think the first month just kind of like not trying to give up on people. I still haven't given up on people, yeah. but I, I, I realized that there was kind of, um, I was like fighting against a current that I was not going to win because like, no matter how much sense I would make in a conversation with someone, um, and how little sense maybe they were <laughs> making, I realized that at the end of the day, the phone conversation ends and then the, um, the social media spiral of like, you know, um, here's, you know, uh, local news footage of anti-Semitism happening on a college campus. You know, here's a uh, faked video from one of those fucking Twitter accounts that look like news, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> it's like called visit goth. Well, I forget what the fuck that is, but there's like one account that like literally doctors videos and it said they're they're saying we call for jewish genocide and yeah and they weren't <laughs> they said that, we charge you with genocide well that, that's one of the unfortunate i'm a lyricist so i heard that i'm like oh fuck it's too bad we charge you with gen yeah, jew yeah. with jewish yeah yeah the g yeah. sound at the end of no. charge it, it's just that but there was a more egregious version of that in canada in canada where i'm from is, oh yeah yeah, is yeah, yeah ludicrous yeah. I mean, yes canadians are no, I'm not even going to say it because I'm a self-hating Canadian. I don't, I don't, I don't want to get that smear all over your, all over your lovely, pristine, po loving, tolerant podcast. Uh -huh. But, but the Canadian Jewish community is very dug in and very afraid and very, uh, uh, it's very difficult for me. Right. Um, and there's a group called Sija, Canadian Israel Jewish Alliance, or something like that. Yeah. And they put a video, and the caption said, "Listen to these protesters in Ottawa chanting." Judah, Judah, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. Right, right. And you click play. Yeah. This is in Ottawa, okay? Right. Near right. the parliament. Yeah. Where the government is, where the prime minister is. Yeah. You turn it on, it's like cl clear as day. Trudeau, Trudeau, you can't hide. It's like not even close. Yeah. That we charge you with and we we want Jewish. You could it plaz if someone was listening for that, but it was just so it was just so transparent. Yes. I mean that if if that was like that was my bad Hasbara moment, I'm yeah. like, this is all they have now. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, like you can't if you're looking for it, if you're in that spiral of fear. I mean, it's just for me, it just reminded me of nine eleven. It was just like yes. we everyone everyone was having this nine eleven response yeah. where yeah. you were just consuming the fear. Yeah, and you and you know, but the difference was for I think at least for. Jewish Americans that I know, they were looking for confirmation um, of this kind of that their paranoia was right the whole time. Yeah. So they were looking for this and, and they couldn't avoid it. They couldn't avoid because they were on social media and the algorithm was telling them this is this is uh, what you need to see. And so every conversation I was having, it was just like, you know, I, I was fighting against the tide. It just was not going to, yeah. it was not going to work. And so then I just started doing videos about people that I knew. And, uh, and that was cathartic and nice and whatnot. But did it, did it feel kind of like, treasonous or like did you feel like no not at all yeah. but only because i i mean only on a personal level where there was a few people who i that's all i mean yeah 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 i don't yeah. mean to your people i just no, mean to your people yeah 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 to, to the homies yeah i mean a little bit i there was there's a few people who i i i haven't seen since and it was very much inspired certain videos and i was like I, i'm sorry but this is what you sound like to me yeah you fucking say uh, but um well, you know so like uh you don't I, like it don't be friends with a comedian i know i mean l listen i've spent my entire career taking the shit dumbass people say i'm using it no but like i i felt like um that was like my mode of catharsis but i i i feel you in that like the i still believe that people will come around. And I think the thing I'm fighting now is not resenting them when they do. Yes. Because like, uh, there are people now who, uh, you know, said some pretty awful shit um, to me and my family who are real fucking quiet now, real quiet. And I 
I think some of that, you know, in some, like part of me believes that what the reason for that is because this is just so egregious. I mean, who, who are you really defending now? Yep. You know, these are people who are just like, it's Netanyahu, you know, and whatnot. And yeah. now they can, they can do that game where you just right. go like, oh, it's these two politicians. Well, that's, I mean, that's who the rape stuff is for. And I'm not, and I'm not weighing in on what did or didn't happen. Right, right, right. But, but the daily constant reminder yes, of that yes. will keep people like that at least quiet yes because if that happened then who am i to it, then it's just it's just it's just a kind of it is wet blanket on any sense of yeah. moral outrage about the present you know? yeah and and you you bring up something that I, I want to uh talk about before we close out here which is that i i got a, a few emails from people who um i was playing this clip of some psychopath in Israel, uh, you know, on a stage with like, uh, Lee Kern and that guy, Elon fucking, you know, that guy at, on Twitter, he's like the, the PR uh, guy, Elon Levy. Or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, is yeah, that, yeah. Is that his name? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, a Elon Levy. I think. Yeah. Elon. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, it was like Lee Kern and Michael Rappaport. And was, she was basically <laughs> Rappaport. Rappaport's <laughs> lost his fucking mind. Uh, but like, so there was a, she, this woman, uh, I forget her name. She was a psych psychiatrist and she was using her credentials as a psychiatrist to say that, um, they live next to, um, sociopaths yeah, I and posted, I posted about her this morning. Yeah. yeah. And there's, uh, you know, it talked about 20,000 living. I, I won't live next to 20,000 rapists. And I'm like, oh, that's, so that is your, that's the way you're going to justify this, yeah. um, you know, uh, ethnic cleansing and, and genocide. And people were like, you should push back against those claims. Uh, and and the way I feel about it is that this is a clear um, rhetorical trap. It is part of uh, the narrative control. <clears throat> it's not that I don't uh, believe that people who are journalists and who uh, are, you know, this is what they do, uh, shouldn't be critical and shouldn't like... Be you know, forensic. Yeah, be that, forensic. That's about what my it. brother and Max are right. doing over at the Gray Zone. Like they're doing, you know, and it's tough work, and people hate them for it. But I think journalists and need to be that's asking what, questions. That's but, literally but, the job. But as far as you and me, and as far as you, it, it, the way I look at it is, I look at it, you know, everything from the perspective of what is the Israeli Hasbara machine trying to do here. Yes. And I look at this at the same way I look at the um, 40 uh, beheaded babies mm -hmm. or the baby put in the oven or, you know, and I, I look at this and go, we, this is a trap. You, the idea that you would sit around debating whether or not this happened as someone who's not there and someone who does not have the resources yep. and, you know, and of course they very purposefully will make sure that journalists aren't there. Um, you know, uh, but journalists like your brother are doing the best with what they have. Um, and uh, you know, the, uh, but they want us to be the guys who are debating whether the baby was put in the oven or if it was just burned like regular, right. they want us to be put in that position. Cause then any critic of Israel is just kind of a fucking freak, right? We're a and freak because we're going, well, how do the bit we're parsing how the baby died. That's exactly right. Meanwhile, what are we not debating? We're not debating the undebatable, which is right. that yesterday, yeah. you know, a hundred babies died. Right. And, right. And that, and that, you know, and uh, they were burned as well or were, crushed as well. Right. And, and it's yeah. not to, you know, by our, by, by our bombs and our white phosphorus and yes. our money and our diplomatic support right. and our veto and right. all that shit. Right. And you know, with the complicity, not just of our government, but also the passivity or outright support of people that I know, That's right. people that I love and people who are family and people who are friends. And so, you know, uh, this idea that I would fall into their obvious poison pill of like, oh, are you against me too? It's like, no, I'm not, I wasn't there. I do know that there was an attack that happened and I wouldn't like go around trying to justify which was okay and which wasn't That's okay. Right. That's not the point. The point to me is that parsing and promoting every single detail of that day has a very specific person. It's, it's uh, purpose. purpose. Yeah. It's to keep the person who is well-meaning and the person who has empathy and has the ability to feel yeah. from speaking out. That's it's right. to keep them in this state of constantly like, ugh. On the back foot. Yeah, what can I say? What can, you know, yeah. it's like every detail that comes out is promoted by 
bad faith actors, Hasbaras, Israeli, you know, government officials, yep. Israeli representatives, uh, our own State Department. And it is this like drip, 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 yep. every day a new detail, yep. every day a new atrocity. And the the idea of like denying it to me is like that's that's not my I'm not a journalist that's right. I don't know what happened but what I do know is why they're doing it and I know that when I fall into that trap of just out finding myself outright because I find the New York Times to be such a, a sus publication based on its oh, track record yes, of inventing of course. atrocities to justify foreign atrocities yes by us. yes you know, but when I, I fall into that trap and I'm reminded I saw downstairs at your place you have a, a you know the, the book about the wire. Oh yeah, yeah, well, yeah. That yeah. great line from the very first episode, which Marla Daniels says to her husband Cedric across the table. Yeah, the Lance game. Reddick, R R I P. Right? What does yeah. she say? Yeah. You cannot. The game is rigged, but you cannot lose if you do not play. Exactly. You know, and yeah. you have to be you have to be really clear about which game you're going to play and which game you're not going to play. Right. Yeah. You know, the game of that somehow it's relevant. What exactly happened for the purposes of is Israel's response justified? Right. No, Hamas could have. I'm, I'm I'm being very serious right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Hamas could have uh, killed your mother, <laughs> killed my mother and the mother of everyone I know. You know, killed four hundred babies, mm -hmm. ripped their heads off. Yeah, and like done unspeakable things. To I mean, I'm just I'm being terrible now. Yeah, yeah, but like I'm just trying to I'm trying to imagine the most horrific, gruesome thing they want me to imagine. Right. You know, you just meditate on. What would Hamas have to have done for you to for be... me to be like, yes, we, I'm sorry, we have to go do what Israel's doing now. It's a good idea. It's morally justified. It's going to lead to something better. And the Palestinians basically deserve it. And we shouldn't stop it. There's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing. Yeah. Okay. And then I go back and I look at what's actually alleged based on what we know. Something like less than a thousand civilians died. Mm -hmm. Some sexual attacks happened. Yeah. Some atrocities, some acts of hot-blooded mm -hmm. revenge by suicidal men who are committing one last act of homicide mm -hmm. as a final statement of what they're doing on this planet and their godforsaken lives mm -hmm. that the, the some horrible things happened at the you know as people broke out of a prison camp right a, a concentration camp there's nothing you can tell me that happened on that day that has me budge one inch right or even flinch and you trying to use my compassion yeah for 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 the purposes of shutting down the rest of my fucking compassion right fuck you right i'm not yes doing it and i say that with love and if i can I, from a like love for something greater like i'm just not falling for it and i actually don't believe the person saying it that they actually believe it right now, now I don't know if I'm with you that I believe everyone's going to come around. I think some people will not come around. Oh no, I I don't think everyone's yeah. going to come I, around. And we have to we have to hold space for those who will. We have to ask ourselves the question: What will our relationship be to them when they come around? Too little, too late. Yeah, there will be consequences. Yeah, we have to grieve the fact that some people are lost to us in terms of you know morally and spiritually. Yeah, but that's just how it is. But what are we doing to keep alive the the North American world Jewishness mm -hmm. that's going to be left, just like Israeli Jews there, um, who are still going to live on that land. There's, yeah, there's no future in which the Jews all leave. No, that's no. not a thing. Yeah, that's and not happening. It's it's, so it's are, not a thing, and it's also not what um, to me is being put forward. No, except by the most the, strident. Terminally online, yes. Terminally uh, online you know, people, like Instagram brained, right? People yes. who just are looking for a kind of pure hit of ideological, right? Yeah, yeah. raw. Yeah, like they just yeah. want that fish scale, like yes. up their nose into their, like <laughs> yes, eradicate all that. And 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 you know that's that's the seed of all kinds of means to an end, yes, evil down the road. Yeah, and it's completely understandable. Yeah, and and that's also inverse. I can't, I can't go for that. No can do. Right, and that's that's just the you know that's just the inverse of what it's. That's just Zionism again. So well, that's I, right, I, and that's one of the successes of colonialism. Uh, you know, a dear, yeah. a dear friend of mine who's been educating me a lot about this uh, recently, you know, po points out that like one of the successes of colonialism is it's a virus that implants our, itself in our yes. minds, and not just yes. in the minds of the oppressor, but in the mind of the oppressed, 100%. so that when the oppressed fights back, they do so using the mindsets and assumptions and working theories yeah. of the colonist and. This is why Audre Lorde, I think it was, said the master's tools will never dismantle the master's, the master's house. house. That's you right. Know? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and and it's and, uh, and because you and I are Jews mm -hmm. who were such great allies to African Americans during the so, civil rights so struggle, good. we and, can uh, absolutely appropriate uh, uh, that quote for our own purposes. And what thanks do we get? What thanks do we get? Where are they now? Where are they now? You know, I listen to rap. Look, I listen to rap music, and I say three words. Three three words. N.W.A. Ad Rock, M.C.A. Mike D. Yes. What haven't we done for your culture? Exactly. You know, I I know M and M's. <laughs> I love it. Whenever I go on Netflix, I go straight to the Black Voices tab, and I say, "What Black Voices will I listen to today?" <laughs> and now you just you're not gonna let us. You're not gonna let us do genocide. Where's Black Live Matza? Yeah. Where is it? Where's the J Jewish Voices tab? <laughs> Oh God, that tab! You know that's next. The next thing is going to be Amazon's, like you know, lifting up of Jewish voices. Finally, and it's uh, yeah. finally we'll have some representation. <laughs> yeah. and, and it's all going to be either just Zionist documentaries. It's going to be the the entire show Fauda. It's going to be uh, yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen's The Spy. Yeah, and then or, like or you don't mess with the Zohar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't mess with the uh, Zohan. Zoh Zohar. Zohar. Zoh Zohan. Maybe it was I don't Zohan. know. Yeah. I never saw Sadler, it. Yeah. Some people I know uh, who are kind of like who are leftists and what they said actually it's kind of good is it i don't know i've never seen it it looks I, like dog shit to I, me i don't yeah i bet it's super racist yeah. but some people i know are like just watch it it was the odds yeah i mean it was, listen, it was a different time no but you're right i mean the the the, the, the i mean i just i have to watch my own triggers mm -hmm. as my dad likes to say the trigger is the smallest part of the gun yeah and one of you know if i knowing myself the thing that gets me into a seething fireball of 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 loathing for yeah. for my quote unquote own people is the self pity yeah. and the self obsession yeah. as if we didn't have schindler's list right. win every award <laughs> as if we didn't have fucking exodus back in the 70s right yes. you know what the theme song was no. to, to the movie exodus no, based no, no. on the lyric yours these are literally the lyrics this land is mine oh. god gave this land to me oh yeah you yeah know, i do know if, that song I, I, you know i'm not saying we run hollywood but it's not like we don't run hollywood oh so we invented hollywood exactly yeah Ch chappelle had that great thing about yeah he's like that's terrible terrible racist it's, yeah. a, it's a racist stereotype that jews control hollywood but <laughs> There's a lot of Jews out there. <laughs> yeah. But this this notion that somehow our story is in any way marginalized. I know, I know. Holocaust history is given pride of place in, you know. Yeah. So, but this is the kind of thing that starts driving me down a rabbit hole of, man, fuck, we suck. And I, I yeah. Can't, yeah, you can't live go, there because yeah. that is corrosive if that, yeah. to my own yes. um, pride and and holding it can, now i'm now i'm playing the game that that you lose if you play yeah and and I, I i always just look at it as like you have to have um an equal amount of if not more so a disdain for not it's not about your own people it's about um uh i mean it's about capitalism it's about geopolitics yep. it's about uh you know the the project of Zionism, like you, you yeah. have to look at all of this through a perspective of like Eurocentrism. Yeah, Eurocentrism. Understanding and, the plight of Mizrahi Jews is yeah, very important too. Right, the, it, the position they're in and all of this. Right, and and the fact that that is like completely erased from the narrative. So yeah. it's like you know you look at if you look at it purely from just like a, oh us Jews and our self pity, you know it's including like you're, including yeah. us left wing anti Zionist Jews and our self pity. Like right. that's that's the that's that's where I yeah that's, when I can realize. That's oh, you shit. pull yourself now, back I'm, right because i oh, okay i'm being that, i'm doing right? it because it's all inside jewish baseball it's yes. like when who will save the soul of the of the mm -hmm. you know you know the 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 ashkenazi north american jewish identity well maybe it needs to fall apart maybe may, maybe we need maybe we need to re, maybe we need to submit to the fact we that go we've, the... we've reached an inflection point a crisis point and and something needs to be reconstituted and we need to see ourselves in a in a more healthy, fulsome way, you know? Yeah, and I, I think it's, uh, a lot of it is going to have to be pointedly political. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of it is also um, going to have to come from a local and community level. I mean, I, I, the, the one thing that I wish, and I assume exists, um, but I don't know about is like, I would like 
I would like a non-Zionist Hebrew school for mm. my child. You yeah. know, I would like, uh, you know, a, a non-Zionist temple uh, or synagogue. You know, um, I I would like, and I know that that has to exist in some level, but I also don't know of any. Well, if it doesn't exist. We have to create it. I'd like to live as if someone's creating it. We just have to find out who that is. And, we got to find and, out who and, that and is and help them. You know, because yeah. we we can't be the only ones thinking about it. Yeah, we can't be, and 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 I know we're not. And uh, so, if it does exist, I'd like to know about it. And if it doesn't exist, um, someone else do it because I got a podcast. <laughs> well, and and this is the, what I was going to say is yeah. that you know you know it may not happen in our lifetimes. Mm. Or, you know, it may not be up to us because we might just, you know, be the end of history. But so right. the point is, as I'm going to say to your daughter, when, when I leave here, it's like, it's up to you, girl. Like oh. you, you got, cause we're, we're going to just, we're just going to, I'm just being joking. I'm just, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> no, please like, tell like, to... like, like, I'm, I'm, she'll just say I'm back just, to you. She'll go, <laughs> Tracto. exactly. Cause she only says tractor. Exactly. Which means I'm off the hook. Yeah. yeah I yeah. told the baby. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's got to do it. I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm, up to I'm, you, I'm, babe. I'm Give her a high ball. five. I'm good. Yeah. We're good. It's all, she's gonna roll it's up over. to you kids. It's up to you. Tracto. <laughs> Tracto. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Daniel, this has been so much better than the show that i had planned because like i was i had like some some dumb videos uh that i was gonna play and i just was you know uh, but then as soon as you started talking i was like oh this is so this is nice this is why i started this podcast it's like taking these like jewish conversations from like inside walls to outside walls yeah, man. and it's like one of the things that i think i like about doing this is that like i, I came to a point where i was like you know what the idea, because I used to never want to talk about any of this in front of anyone who wasn't Jewish. Mm -hmm. um, and because I was, you know, if you agreed with me and you weren't Jewish, I'd be like, you hate the Jews. Um, and now I have like come to realize that uh, these are conversations that people have been having for years, but just not doing publicly. And uh, it's very nice. It's very cathartic for me. Um, well, me too. And look, again, not to get all in our egos about it. But the but the DMs don't lie. Yeah, DMs don't lie, dog. The, the actual effect. This is not the reason to do it, but the actual effect. One effect of non-Jewish people mm -hmm. witnessing Jewish people talking like this is they can breathe again. Yes. They can be like yes. Yeah, I knew I loved Jews for a reason. Yeah. Like yeah. like I knew that I felt I related to them. Right. And. and and it breaks the programming of this dark, this this dark attempt by people to co-opt Judaism and Jewishness by claiming they represent all Jews. Like every single has bars, every single like a public Zionist claims they represent all Jews. Here's here's a really funny trick they're now pulling. Yeah, I'll post something or a debate with somebody or whatever, and I'll people in me in my comments be like. He is a member of a fringe. He does not resent, represent all Jews. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be like, yeah, I, I know. I know. That's we, the point. We don't claim to represent don't all claim Jews. To, in fact, what what the best of Jewish tradition is being willing to speak in the name of those who aren't the majority. Yes. Because those who aren't the majority aren't speaking for a reason. So yeah. it might as well be me yeah. speaking. You know, like yes. that's that's my expression of my Jewish speaking for a minority and then they bring out the term like you were talking about the weaponization of like woke Capo. social justice language yeah. yeah they love this stuff man like yeah. 2020 has been just a boon for zionists mm. all these new academic yeah activisty terms and you know we can have that other conversation yeah. but well they're all but, from 2015 and they're all buzzfeed <laughs> but yeah exactly so that's, that's, that's why they don't ring totally true to people they're like this is an old meme yeah like, that's a hundred percent true but tokenization oh yes, now they're yes, saying yes oh someone's using token Jews like, you mm -hmm. know, Matt Lee or Daniel Mette or Norman mm -hmm. Finkelstein or whoever. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not what tokenization no. means, you absolute tool. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. not at all what it means. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's what we are is dissenters. Yes. And there was used to be a magazine called Dissent. Yeah. A Jewish magazine. Yeah. And maybe there still is. Yeah. And and like the, the also it's funny because the other term that they use a lot uh, is they paint any... Um, uh, anyone's dissenting, speaking out against Zionism, uh, they call them an as a Jew, uh, ASA Jew. So oh, right, right. As a Jew, and then they say something anti Zionist. As if that's not what they're doing. And that's all they do. All they do is just claim, like, your Jewish friends are scared. And it's just like, you can't claim to be all Jews. You know, Remember the that New York Times headline, yeah. Why All Your Jewish Friends Can't Stop Shaking. Oh, God. <laughs> 
that was in the New York Times. Uh -huh. Can't stop shaking. See, that's that BuzzFeed language I'm talking about. Yeah. It's just like your Jewish, your Jewish friends are, are scared okay. and they literally can't. <laughs> Like, they really, they literally can't with this. Um, they're screaming, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, it's just so oh childish. Your Jewish friends are shaking. Yeah, yeah, well, it's trauma porn. It's yes, it's like your place of power, literally in this fucking diabolical matrix, is sitting in front of your computer, mm -hmm. generating re-traumatized feelings that make you feel scared and alone. Mm -hmm. Screaming it to millions of people and having people being like, "Yes, girl," like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then it doesn't make the feeling go away. No. And no. now you're just getting off on it. Yeah. And now you're just trying to infect the whole world with it and use that to make them shut up. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. Brow, it's browbeating people, and it's so yeah. basically. I think what we can agree here, and now mm -hmm. you know, as a Gen Xer, I can say this, and it's as maybe, a Gen Xer, this, this might be a little, mm -hmm. you know, self-hating for you, but yeah. it's millennials' fault. Oh yeah, I, I agree. All completely. of your your lingo, your language, your, I know. your technology. I know. I yeah. we 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 and because now Israel's tweeting. I know, like a child, like a like well, a, now like a like a, like a, like a twenty three year old on 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 Buzzfeed. So yes. in the tw tw twenty fifteen. Yeah, it is. It is watching them tweet like a child is like killing me because I'm just like, who is this for? We need the, to we need to do some like no, some like. like some readings yes. of Israeli. Yes, can we, we next, do. Next, can, can we do this again? Sometime? Let's do it again very and, soon. And be more like a hundred percent comedian about it. Yeah, I I love it. Yeah. I and you're you, so you live in New York, right? I live in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. So we will, uh, of course, be doing through the computer again. Well, you know, I've but, ju I just started seeing somebody out here. So uh, who knows? Who knows? Maybe if that happens, God Daniel, willing, I would be. I'm just saying, I might be visiting more. Oh, okay. You're yeah. not moving. Don't what do so. you need New York for? It's so it's, uh, it's all the rats. I'm telling you, if another if there's another Holocaust, you're going to be begging to come to New York. That's the Jewish. That's the safe that's space true. for Jews. That's true. That's that's going that's my Zionism is eventually that's right moving to New York and getting a spot at I the never, Comedy Cellar. People are oh my god, totally. hide me, Comedy <laughs> Cellar. Would you, <laughs> would you hide me and give me a second headlining gig? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would you hide me and give me a spot? Uh, Daniel, thank you so much for coming on Bad Hasbara. We r really appreciate it. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Matt. I'm sorry. Excuse me, but um, you're mispronouncing oh, the sorry. word. It's Hasbara. 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 Yeah, but you know, I'm going to pronounce it the way I pronounce it, I, it as a way of shitting on. In Hebrew, it would be Hasbara Ra. Oh. Bad is Ra. Oh, that's right. Hasbara Ra. Yeah, that's right. Bad is Ra. I say raw, not raw. Raw, raw, raw. Ra, ra, ra. <laughs> I was also bad at French accents when I was a kid. Mm. Um, thank you so much to everyone for listening. You can follow Daniel on his social medias. Daniel, what is your, uh, what are your handles? My handle, my one and only handle on Twitter and Instagram. Twitter is much more snarky and bantery and Instagram is a little bit more sincere, mm -hmm. but it's all me. Uh, Daniel B. Mate, M-A-T-E. And if people want to check out my musical theater work, it's at yes. danielmate.com. And if people want to check out my mental chiropractic service mm. called Walk with Daniel, where I take walks with people and help them get their minds unstuck very quickly. I it's like not, it. It's not therapy. It's not coaching. It's like, let me get in, get out, line up your mind yeah. on, an, on a situation where you're feeling stuck. Crack your brain. Crack your brain so that you can be your best self yeah, and just yeah, yeah. go and do the thing. Uh, walkwithdaniel.com. Check it all out and uh, patreon.com slash broadcast for all of you out there who are watching the show and are like, I'd like to support monetarily. Patreon.com slash broadcast. In other words, in other words, I'd like not to be a raging anti-Semite. That's right. It is anti-Semitic to not give me $5 a month or $8 a month. It's if you want to hear your name shouted out on a, a show about The Wire, you'd have to listen to that in order to... Also, anyways, patreon.com slash broadcast. Email me with uh, anything, badhasbara at gmail.com. All right, everyone. Thanks again so much for listening. And until next time, I'm trying to figure out a sign out. One sign out was there is a list. And it was very specific to that guy who was like pointing at the calendar. But I feel like people don't know that. What's a good sign out? Hmm. Um, until you, next you, time. I mean, if you want to choose, like, this isn't the Wire podcast, right? Right. If yeah. it was that, you could say you want it one way, but it's the other way. Yeah. So if for the Wire podcast, I say if you come at the king, you best that, not miss. Yeah. So now I and need this one. Uh, uh, what is the fuck? What is the best? Keep. Uh, uh, 
don't uh, uh, occupy. Uh, and the, I mean, I could be sincere and just be like, um, free Palestine. But yeah, yeah, seems too sincere. How about I? Yeah, we're gonna have to think about. We'll that. figure it out. Yeah. But until next time, there is a end phrase coming. Thank you so much. Don't believe everything. Don't. You,